If you are in business and you value leads that generate revenue, then this episode of Straight Talk is for you. Because a lead is one thing, but managing that lead to get the maximum value is another. And to speak to this, I welcome Ed Marsh, the founder and principal of Concilium Global Business Advisors. Ed, hope you're doing well. I am. I am very well, Jeff. Thank you for having me. I know we, we were discussing before we got on this recording, there might be a little bit of waste that's happening with leads, but I want to start with a real simple question. But, what is a lead? Well, I mean, that's that, one of the important things that companies have to do, I believe, is actually create a lexicon that where they've got proper definitions and everyone uses the same lexicon. Is a lead somebody that submitted an inquiry on your website? Is it somebody that did a flyby your trade show booth and handed off a business card and said, call me? Or is it somebody where you've actually spoken to them? You understand they've got a need. You understand that you can help with it. Or is the reality somewhere in between? I think each company will have a different definition. But what I would say is a lead is somebody who you know to be an actual person working for an actual business that has a likely requirement that you can probably help them with. Now, they may not be at that stage yet. They might be much earlier in their process just trying to understand what's going on and quantify it and get some other perspectives and and try to learn and, and find out what options they have. So it doesn't necessarily mean that it's buying ready. It may not be a sales qualified lead, but that's, I think, the way I would def define a lead. Sounds good. And it makes sense. Now, I just wonder, are there any misconceptions about leads that, that you notice that you'd like to bring out? Yeah, I think, well, it starts with a lot of misunderstandings. The marketing team often has some sort of a target. They're supposed to create leads, but nobody's quite defined what that is, what, what the lead is, what the responsibility is, how it gets handed off to sales, what sales commitment is in terms of timeliness of follow-up and how many times they're going to follow up on it, um, what the likelihood is that a lead actually converts into a meeting and then into a qualified opportunity and then into some sort of a you know closed one deal. I think there's a lot of misconceptions where people just have this idea, we're going to collect a bunch of names and we're going to throw them into this into this sausage making process that we call sales and something's going to come out the other end without any real sort of rigor or tracking in the way it's done. It, it comes back to the same theme that we've talked about several times before, having process, having accountability, having rigor, having an engineer process that you know will, will, will take you through a series of steps to get to a destination. So you must have some favorite sources of leads. Are there some top ones you'd like to mention? Well, I mean, obviously, uh, organizations like ISSA do a great job with trade shows. They do a great job. I mean, your media and everything that you publish creates great opportunities for print and digital sorts of uh, um, lead generation for companies. And, and those are two great sources, particularly in the industrial space. But of course, there's good old fashioned outbound sales, salespeople prospecting. There's uh, kind of inbound marketing or content marketing. Um, there's partnerships, which are increasingly important. We see it kind of originating in the tech world and now moving into, into other sectors where partnerships are really important. Um, channel partners can be a great source of leads. Certainly, uh, um, you know, there's pay-per-click, there's social media advertising. There's a bunch of different ways to generate leads. And companies tend to think they pick one or two, in my experience, at least in the industrial space, I believe that they ought to be working on a number of them simultaneously. Okay. I liked your analogy of the sausage making machine. You know, you toss it in there, you let it do its thing and out comes something at the other end. Right. So when you, when you think about all those leads you might have, instead of doing that, is there a grading system or a way of pinpointing the best ones? What do you think about that? I think it's a fabulous idea. I mean, in, in kind of um, sales and marketing lexicon, we might call it lead scoring. And lead scoring can be anything from very simple. We actually met with them. They had two people from their company in our booth at the trade show. They've got a defined project. They've got a budget for it. They have to do such and such. And and so that might get a very high lead score. And, and, and that could be the extent of the process. On the other hand, the more sophisticated a company is, the better their marketing automation and CRM. If they've got the ability to actually extrapolate from online activity, how many pages a visitor has hit on their website, what order they've hit those pages in, how frequently they've come back, how many people from the same company, 
whether they've opened emails, you know, all those kinds of factors can figure into it. And so if you've got many people from the same company taking action on pages on your website that we might call bottom of the funnel or really kind of decision oriented, and you have visited with them at a trade show and they've opened your emails that your salespeople have sent them, you might score that quite high. You might say, in fact, okay, we want to initiate some team selling in this case. We want to have top to top outreach as well as the sales rep. So uh, the, the inverse then, of course, is a lead that maybe just hit your website and submitted a form and asked for some information, but has never taken a phone call. You haven't seen them anywhere else. There's only one person from the company, or maybe it's even from, you know, a work from home um, ISP sort of an address and you know nothing about them. That would get a very lead, low lead score, perhaps just receive periodic emails as part of your marketing effort. So lead scoring, I think is a really important idea. Someone watching this are like, how do I do all this? What do I need? What tools do I need? What, what would you say to that? So that question, how do I do all this is always a really important one, because on the one hand, we can get into really sophisticated detail and lay out a beautiful picture of how it potentially could work. But then that becomes overwhelming. And so the idea is to have an aspirational understanding of what's possible, but a realistic understanding of where you are today. What steps do we need to take today? to just begin the process working. And I think those steps really revolve around um, common definitions, setting expectations for the sales team. We expect that every trade show lead, for instance, or folk coming from your ISSA show recently in Las Vegas, they might say, for every one of our leads from the show, we expect at least seven attempts by a salesperson to contact that lead. If after seven attempts using email and phone and direct mail and social media, we haven't has success, then we'll continue to nurture them, but we'll know that we gave it a decent effort. So having expectations for what that follow-up looks like and some accountability for doing it, I think are just kind of the fundamental places to start. Not terribly aspirational, not the first step, but somewhere in between is the idea, imagine if management had information that would let them double down on the lead generation sources that really work, those that led to meetings and led to qualified deals and led to revenue at a higher rate. And, and, and perhaps even understanding those leads may be much more expensive upfront, but based on the way they move through the process, they're a much better deal. In other words, they convert at a much higher rate. And having that kind of data then means that companies can make marketing decisions, not based on some kind of a hocus pocus or Ouija board or throw a dart of the wall or gut feeling or last year's budget plus 5%, but rather they can say, we know this works. And so we're going to invest more in this and invest less in something else. So I think that's a really neat place for companies to be able to get to in lead management. All right. Well, I think we understand leads and how to maximize them, grade them, get them into the pipeline and, and uh, make it all work. So I appreciate your time and we'll come up with another topic for a future straight talk. But good information today. Sounds good, Jeff. Thanks very much for having me.